So welcome to another technology video. So um, today we're going to be walking through what our PFSense installation looks like. Um, so as you can see here, uh, we are on the latest 245 release, which is P1, which was uh, released on the 9th of June. So we did a fresh install on that and um, we uh, aren't running any services internally. So we are not using Snort or anything else to do the IDS IPS function, um, but we are using uh, PF Blocker NG. So, um, what I'm going to walk you through is the list that we're using today because we've pretty much nailed it now where um, we've been going through all of the feeds and removing the dead feeds and getting things set up for. Uh, everyday browsing as a home user so when people are using websites we don't want to see um, block content particularly but we do want to block malicious content so um, I'll walk you through what feeds we've got in place so the first thing that you want to do is once you've got PF blocker ng installed I'll just show you which versions we've got at the moment so if we just go to our package manager um, we've got a clean install and we are using the PF blocker ng devil version so that's 225 underscore 33 um, so first thing you want to do is go to your firewall and pf blocker ng so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the feeds that we've got running um, so as you can see here we're using the ipv4 category so um, this is the priority one um, stuff and we've got this set so that we're blocking inbound and we're blocking outbound because what we don't want to do is allow any infected internal devices which we haven't got to be honest but um, if we did have an internal device that had some sort of infection we don't want it uh, polling home and letting the um, um, these people know that actually uh, there's a there's a susceptible host that could be controlled so we block inbound and outbound on that um, we don't use any of the other um, priorities, so just priority one and no other IPv4 lists. Um, we don't use any IPv6 lists. And then we'll talk about the uh, DNSBL categories that we use. So um, we don't use any of the easy lists. We don't use any of the Attaway lists. Uh, but we do use the malicious lists. It's unfortunate that the, the, the ransomware tracker lists are no longer valid so they finished in December 2019 um, so if you're using those you might as well switch them off because they're not doing anything um, but we ha do have the following uh, lists here that we're using as you can see where we've got a tick next to them we have disabled MVP MVPS hosts and the reason for this is it blocks things like um, Google tracking for Google adverts and things so uh, my wife uses YouTube quite a lot and it interferes with the uh, adverts on there that inevitably stops her videos from working so I've disabled that list because the only thing that's ever cropping up in there is uh, things like Google AdSense adverts, Google syndication um, and various tracking um, we're okay with that in this household we're not we're not worried about that particularly but what we do want to block is actually um, the legitimate malware infected um, domains or hosts on the domains and we do that by having these other items ticks here so as you can see here this this is the list so make a note of all of these feeds because it does do its job and stop stuff coming in the only other additional um, DNSBL list that we use We've got two or three, um, so we are using this one here, BBCam177, uh, the MS2 version, which is on there, and we're also blocking uh, URL shorteners, so malicious URL shorteners that potentially you click on a, a shortened URL and it'll take you off to a malware-infected host, so we block that as well. Moving on down, we also block the coin blocker all list, um, there are a couple of other lists that you can block if you want to, but we're not. We, we we've had a look at that. Um, the main one is you want to block the coin blocker all, which also includes the coin blocker optional list, um, and that covers you for um, crypto jacking. That's all there is to those lists. Now the next thing we want to do is we'll show you the um, how we've got the lists set up. 
So IPv4 list, as you can see here, we are denying both inbound and outbound traffic. So um, if we see an IP address in that list, then we're going to block it coming in and we're also going to block it going out as well. And we are updating that list every hour and we're also logging it. So that's what that means. IPv6 we don't use, GOIP we don't use either because uh, we're not running uh, any mail servers or anything like that. Um, IP reputation we are not using either. Again, if you're running your own web server, then potentially you might want to you might want to use some of these features. But um, in our instance, we're not using that. And then the uh, DNSBL groups we've got. This is the order that we're running it in. Malicious at the top. Uh, BBCAM 177 second, then the URL shorteners, and then the crypto jackers down here. Uh, URL shorteners don't update a huge amount of um, very often, so we update that list uh, weekly. So that's all there is to it. Once you've got that in place, um, then you should be good to go. Uh, the DNSBL category, so this is the, uh, the various lists that we've got here. These provide sort of um, groupings of domains and categories. Um, if you wanted to go through and enable that and block anything in there that you wanted to, that's fine, just go ahead and do that. We're not using that list either. And safe search, we've got disabled as well. So that's all there is to that. And um, if we go through now, we'll have a look at the reports. So you can see here, this is the, uh, the priority one list, IPv4 list. It's doing its job quite well. There's quite a lot of stuff that gets blocked on there. I've just cleared our list just before this video, but if you go back to your main dashboard and you add the PF blocker NG via the dashboard include a widget option at the top here, um, then you can you can add that. But when you first install PF blocker NG, it gets added automatically anyway. But if you do delete it, you can always re-add it. Next thing that we've got on here is our firewall logs. Again, we don't do anything special with that. We block everything inbound. Uh, we do have some port forwarding for a couple of uh, services that we that we are using. Um, but again, it's only one service, so uh, we don't need to be too um, robust with that. We just accept the fact that you know we do have one port that's open that's coming into our system here. We don't do any other protection on that. We use things like uh, access control lists on the server that we're using, and we also um, have uh, another device that is outside that filters traffic inbound. So apart from that, that is all there is to it. Um, if you've got any questions or you're not sure about how to configure things, then leave us a comment in the description below. Um, if you found the video useful or just found it interesting, give it a thumbs up and be great if you can subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.